So clearly today in 2016, Facebook, like most other companies and startups, is a closed ecosystem. It's a walled garden. You basically have to log in to access any of it, and it's run on centralized services. And this can be a good thing or a bad thing. I mean, it kind of goes against the ethos of the internet. The internet's really about decentralization and kind of being uh, networked and opened. So they're going against what technology but obviously by controlling all the data, they're able to like monetize that data and monetize their users, which helps them grow faster. I mean, it helps them hire people, it helps them buy more infrastructure and achieve their outcome of 7 billion people. And obviously by having all the data in their own data centers around the world, um, they can improve the speed, the reliability, and the security for all their users. But they're at 2 billion users now. They're going to hit scale issues as they get towards the The interesting thing is over the past year or two, you get the rise of these blockchain-based uh, technologies and platforms like Ethereum, which is all about building smart contracts and decentralized apps, and things like IPFS, which is distributed files. Now, the technology isn't quite there yet, but the, the promise of it and what everyone's working towards is a, a system where you kind of look at the entire internet as a single database, as a single computer. So as Facebook moves towards trying to connect all 7 billion people on the planet and achieve that mission, um, it'll actually make sense for them to decentralize their backend, to decentralize their database and their storage and all your data. What this means is instead of running Facebook.com and all the associated applications and all the database and all your data on Facebook servers that they control, instead it's distributed across the entire internet in a very safe system. Another thing I think Facebook's done really well, and particularly Mark Zuckerberg, is looking at the entire social uh, media landscape as new platforms arise, things like Instagram and, and uh, Snapchat, and then making offers to acquire them. Because every one of these social platforms pretty much follows the exact same kind of path. First, it's the teenagers who get onto that and they're the early adopters and they use it really well. Um, the teenagers then attract advertisers. And this is natural because big brands and advertisers always want to reach the younger people. Because if you can reach them early on, then you basically create loyal customers, lifelong customers. But then as the platform grows, it gets more popular and then the older generations, the older people start joining it. So, you know, the teenagers' parents start joining it. But once they do that, then it's not cool anymore. So you've got to go to the next platform. And Zuckerberg knows this, like, I mean, that's why they, he bought uh, Instagram really early on for a billion dollars, and that turned out to be an amazing deal. That's why he's bought Oculus, because he knows that VR is going to be a massive platform. But the big one that he missed out on is Snapchat. I mean, he offered Snapchat $3 billion not too long ago, and they turned it down. Now they are bigger than Twitter. They have more users than Twitter. And as technology progresses and gets faster and faster, rather than coming out every, say, five years, these new big social platforms, they'll start coming out every two years, every one year, every six months, and they'll reach a billion users really quickly. These new platforms might arise so quickly that Facebook and Mark Zuckerberg might be, not be able to move fast enough to make acquisition offers, and these companies become huge threats to Facebook. And so for, to avoid becoming the next MySpace, here's what Facebook might actually do. This, here's, the, here's the second incentive for them to decentralize their backend so they can always stay on top and always maintain dominance. Facebook could actually work on becoming the, the social layer of the internet, essentially the DAO, the Decentralized Autonomous Organization, that is the social fabric of the internet. Meaning rather than running all their code and all your and having all your data on their own centralized servers, they can actually create a blockchain-based Facebook um, and not really worry about Facebook.com, but just the back end of it all. So all their code, all your data, all your friends list would all be stored on this decentralized autonomous organization, right? A bunch of decentralized apps or smart contracts running on, say, the Ethereum blockchain. Now, when you go to Facebook.com, it'll still look exactly the same. You'll still use it and you'll still like feel like it's just the normal Facebook. But in the back end, everything will be completely decentralized and open and you're in control of that data. Now, Facebook already has a developer platform where you can actually build applications using, like, say, Facebook Connect, but the data is very restrictive. With this DAO, it would actually be completely open and transparent to the entire world. So when the next Snapchat comes along, what they'd actually be able to do is, rather than them building their own separate data set, which is what Snapchat did, which is why they're a big threat, they have their own separate data silo, their own separate servers. Instead, there'll be an incentive for Snapchat to actually um, have the front end, Snapchat's kind of like the front end, and then plug into this decentralized social layer, the Facebook DAO, and access all your friends list and all your... So that when you log into this new Snapchat, the next Snapchat or whatever, you can just one click and instantly you have access to your entire friends list. You don't have to re-add your friends, you don't have to rely on your contact address book and your phone. You wouldn't have to do this bizarre thing where like, you know, you want to share a piece of content or you share an update, you have to go to every individual little platform to share it. Instead, you'd just be able to post it to one thing and go into the Facebook and by default, your friends list would be completely transferable to any type of front end. So it's almost like Facebook.com becomes a front end, Messenger uh, app becomes a front end, but it all plugs into this decentralized backend. 
And over time, this network effect would encourage all social front ends, all social apps to plug into this back end. So Snapchat, is, as it exists today, would probably want to plug into the back end and any new app. And as a result, what this would mean is that Facebook becomes like a decentralized uh, social fabric of the internet that can never, ever shut down. So it will maintain their global dominance forever. And even if people stop using Facebook.com or the Facebook app or even the Messenger app, they can still create new apps and new front-end experiences and that still plug into this backend. So they're still... Con like, for example, if all, if all the Facebook servers were shut down tomorrow, Facebook would cease to exist. But with this Facebook DAO, they can actually create their own cryptocurrency. And the only way to shut down this whole system would be to shut down the internet. So I hope some of that makes sense. Um, explaining this DAO concept and blockchain and Ethereum is, uh, the analogies are really hard. I don't know how to do it quite yet. Anyway, snap your thoughts. I future.